Okay, so today while I was loading in, I remembered to check. And... <laughs> Quick save is by default mapped to... Q! And quick load is, is mapped to... L! Q! L! Q! L! Wow! <laughs> Back in an era where you mapped things not to letters that- Cause they, like... Were in a location that was useful. <laughs> but because they resembled the name of the action. Like, <laughs> like it's Microsoft Word. Like, <laughs> all right. Like it's Microsoft Word, and you're like, wow. Sorry, I'm just accepting this. Okay, so we're we're looking for the guy that stole my journal. Still. All oh, right, right. WASD is also not moving keys. Maybe I should remap them to that. See. W is spells. S is statistics. I'm not gonna know those maps. You know what? Gameplay. Assign keys. Actions? No. A lot of stuff is in here, like thieving is not a, by default mapped. Zoom in, scroll, okay, yeah. Scroll up. Left. Down. Right. There we go. Ah! <laughs> this sucks. But also reaching for the arrow keys sucks. Oh, the arrow keys still work too. Okay. Old Mebeth. This squat old woman looks like she has had all the color blood out of her. Everything from her hair, to her shawl, to her robe, all are shades of gray. The only splotches of color on her come from several strange herbs which are tied to her belt by the stalks. The, herb make a, the herbs make a strange swoosh when she moves, like a broom. Greetings. The elderly woman turns and stares at you, and you notice the gray shades blanketing her body extend to her features as well. Her hair is a wispy gray, and her eyes are like chips of granite. She frowns when she sees you. And who might you be, hmm? What? Can I look at my journal? I don't think I can, can I? The name's a Don. Do I know somebody named a Don? I've met a lot of people today, and by what today I mean the last few weeks. Uh, I wonder if this is also akin to like. There's layers to it a little bit. Like one, you could just lie about who you are, just to be like, "Aha, yes, here's a false name," because I'm not going to tell you who I really am. But this is in the context of somebody who doesn't actually know his own name, because we have amnesia. And so I'm thinking about Disco Elysium being inspired by this game, and I'm just thinking about how, like, like your character, I was about to name him, but I guess maybe I shouldn't, uh, can just proudly declare what his name is, confidently. I think you can even change your name and, like, repeatedly be wrong. And, like, and then you eventually find out what your name actually is regardless, and it's always the same name. It's not, like, changed by your choices, because, of course, your name was already a name before you started making up your own name while you had amnesia, because you didn't know who you were. Uh, I am a traveler. Is that so? And where have you traveled from, then? Uh, from the mortuary through the hive to here. Ha! Mortuary pale faces, all concerned with making sure the debtors are all in the just the right place. Ha! Dusties and fools. Two words, same meaning. The woman's features suddenly go blank, and her eyes roll to the back of her head. Are you all right? The woman starts mumbling, her tone mocking. Me am dusty, me want to die, cause this life fake. 
Her eyes snapped back to front. She snored, Dusties! No, se non no sense, no nothings. She points her fingers at you. You, ru you run out of this life, child. There's little or no place to go. I see. Uh, who are you? With a sly cackle, she wags her eyebrows. Have you not heard of all Mebeth, then, the midwife of the square? Have you not now? She narrows her eyes and her voice droops. Well, now you have, for I am Mebeth. You're a, a midwife. What do you do? Updated my journal. I set bones right, drive the cough out of the sick, yank out squealing, stubborn babes, mend cloaks or a rag or two. Make cures and herbs and other such. She squints at you, studying your scars. Be you need any cure or three, do you then? Curses. I. You'll be needing some cures to, to look. Uh, you'll be needing some cures to look at you. Do you want to buy some, do you? She glances at the scars covering her body again, then shrugs. Too late to be asking for them, I think. I don't have any cure. I don't need any cures now, but they might be useful later. Could I see what you have? Just the usual stuff? Wait, which one's my inventory? Oh, yeah, this one's got the bracelet. I don't know if it'll be worth more elsewhere or something. Might as well just sell the stuff. Just filling up my inventory. Right, I can't identify that, so it's probably just something cooler. So I have 200 waiting to be sold. Dirty rat charm. Stealth bonus. Mine is charisma, but that's useful for thieves. Or just, it fits with the whole roguishness. Corpse fly charm. Target's vision will turn black. Ah, oh, you can blind someone. Charm of infinite recall? Lower skill set to 100. But it's tempt. It's. Oh. So you can use this to identify items. Bit expensive. This is like a res? I mean, I, I, have, I have not been heavily using the healing items that I've got so far, so I don't think I need them. I just would like to have more money, please. And it seems she was willing to buy that stuff. Got a bit more than before. I had some questions for you. Go and ask, then. You know someone named Farod? Farod, that, that, ha! He watches Mebeth spits once, twice, three times, then follows it by making a semicircle over her heart. That gold turd. What you be wanting with the likes of him? I need to be. I need to find him. Do you know where he is? He's not in Ragpicker Square. That much I can tell you. You need to find a way under the square to get to that turd spider's kip. She spits again. Even talking about him leaves a foul taste, it does. He's under the square. She jabs her finger at the floor. Aye, he's buried beneath these piles of trash, him and his boys, and a tough time you'd have digging him out of his nest. She shakes her head. Let be, let be, child. I need to find him. How do I get down there? Updated my journal. Nebeth frowns, then sighs. Here, Tal, Farod's got a gate that leads to his, n his nest somewhere here in the square. 
It's just a matter of finding it. You might want to ask some of the others. Some who travel a bit more than El Old Mammoth. I see. Are you a witch, Mebeth? Mebeth scrutinizes you. I say not as to what I am and isn't, but what you be wanting to know so fool bad for that you hound an old woman, barking and sniffing for her juicy bit of gossip. I want to learn about magic. Could you teach me? Mebeth laughs. <laughs> I'm no teacher. No school mistresses, old... No schoolmistress is all set up to teach you like that, like, uh, to teach like them in the big fest hall. There's others somewhere, I'm sure, that'll spill the dark of it. You'd be wasting your time with old Mebeth, so you would. I don't agree. I think you'd have a lot to teach. Mebeth looks at you intently. Oh, I? Why do you want to learn such things? Because I may need it to solve the mystery of who I am. After a moment, Mammoth nods. The art may help, it may not, and ye must not rely on it to solve all of your problems. She sighs. Child, it's most like only going to add another chip to your pile of questions. I understand. Will you teach me? Ha! Huh? Mammoth shakes her head. One should make songs rather than make magic. Songs have more beauty. Magic's been made dull, commonplace, soiled by the mob of people that have tromped through it. <laughs> he squints at you. I'll teach you, but first you'll need to do some things for me, you hear? Like what? My legs aren't good for walking around sigil, and there are errands I'd have you run. I need you to fetch me some herbs from the market. It's Spireward. Easterly and southly from there in the hive market. As a sample. She takes a black seed from her coat and flicks it to you. Examine the seed. My journal. You twist the black seed in your hand. As you do, you feel a small bite. Then a small drop of blood oozes from your thumb. There are tiny barbs in the seed, like teeth. Mabeth snorts. Careful with it. Show it to one of the fruit merchants in the market. They will know what herbs you seek. Very well. I'll return when I have the herbs. I kind of just wanted to see where the conversation would go overall. I didn't necessarily know how it all go. What's up? Let's see. Get out of here. Done. I don't think I'm necessarily going to go become... A, uh, a magician? I don't know. Maybe. But I'd have to drop my current class again. But the quests that you do in the process probably give you some experience. Quick save. <gasps> what a button to have. We're still trying to poke around this whole zone. This sagging platform looks as if it is about to collapse. One of the strange pathing quirks of games like this is that your characters all move in a formation, but it just kind of dumbly applies the the grid of the formation onto the map wherever you click. So you can click on a platform and your character will be going there, but it tries to put everybody in your party in a specific configuration around where you clicked, and it won't really think about elevation. So sometimes you have a mo moment like a minute ago where Mort started going back down the ramp, even though I was going up it, because it decided that he's going to go downhill. The archway leads only inches into the small building before being blocked by a solid wall of refuse. The rubbish is packed so tightly it may as well be stones and mortar. Updated my journal. Hold up, Chief. Look at this. Peering down, you notice a number of dirty footprints that lead into the archway. And do not turn around. Must be a portal through here or something. A portal? How do we open it? Out of it the slightest, Chief. It's gotta be a, co a common key, though. Look at all the traffic that's gone through. Maybe one of the lowlifes around here will, uh, will know. I'll ask around, then. Let's go. Yeah, it's labeled in dialogue mode. 
Alright, does this lowlife know? Maybe I should ask, ask the randos? Maybe he's even got it. Are you in league with the dickhead? The man is draped in filthy, tattered brown robes, a long hood concealing most of his face from view. Greetings. You see his eyes narrow beneath his hood, and he takes a step back. What do you want? What are you doing? I'm looking for some damned bodies is what I'm trying to do. But you think the dead powers had packed up their kip and left of the plane. The people are staying healthy and all. There's a sudden gleam in his eye. We had a pox last month, and it was a glorious time. It was bodies stinking to the high heavens, and plenty of jink to be had, too. I had some questions. Oopsie. He raises an eyebrow. I've got some for you. I got some for you then. Like, <coughs> yeah. Like, what do you want to know, and how badly did you want to know it? What do you mean? Look around your cutter. I don't make enough jink to go lighten lighten up the dark for nothing. It'll take a bit of coin. It will, if he wants to chat. Never mind, then. Nod, do you know about the port key? Nod, I already paid you. Rude. I need healing. I require Hello. healing. I had some questions. My name's Ratbone Cutter. I'm a thief for hire in the employ of Sharegrave, the boss of the collectors you see around this square. He pays me mostly to learn his lads to be real quiet-like and how to fight if they runs into a spot of trouble. That's like the only qu yeah, we already had it today. Do you know how to get through that trash-packed archway northwest of here? Updated my journal. Eh? Nay, I don't. Say, you could ask Creedon, the rat catcher. Sometimes he goes poking about up there and just disappears for an odd while. Creedon's usually in the hive, right outside the Office of Vermin and De Disease Control. Office of... where's that? Ratbone frowns at you. Back in the hive, Cutter. Find a tout if you needs to. Okay, so we have a lead, I guess. Go back to the hive. And figure out what we can. Alright. There's still... still so, so many enemies in this zone. Why does everybody hate me? Oh, he's just gonna get away again. Yeah, all right. So we still have more regions of the Hive to even check out. Entire screens. Oh my god, get out of my way. I'm just trying to get across town. If you try to run away from me, can you do it better? And stop always being in my way? All right. So like many starting quests, this one seems like it's going to get us incorporate, uh, get us acquainted with the starting town, because we're going to end up going pretty much everywhere over the course of just, try just trying to figure out where they want us to go. I guess I can't keep going in those directions. Yes, yeah, so they're all called Dabas. That was not a, that was not a special Dabas.
Raskin's Kip. How angry do they get when I go in here? Yeah, you literally don't have an you don't even have your own name. I'm gone. There's Braskin. Don't know who that is. In a loud, booming voice, Braskin asks, What in the name of the abyss are you doing in my house? Leave now, before I make you even more ugly than you already are. B farewell. The end. We're good friends. I'm gone. Crier of S. Anon. Streams of tears have carved channels down this man's dust-covered face. He looks to be a monk or a holy man of some sort, but the dirt covering his body make it nearly impossible to see the man's the man beneath. Oh, I appear to be under attack. <laughs> he is chanting and rolling his head back and forth. It looks like some sort of ritual. Greetings. The man stops his frenzied chanting and glares at you with with tear-rimmed eyes. He opens his parched mouth to speak, but all he can manage is a withered croak. What's wrong? Why are you crying? I... His voice is so hoarse that it sounds like it's... like he's been without water for days. As you watch, a tear trickles down his face. I... am a crier... of S. Anon. S. Anon? Who is that? What? Who is S Anon? The man throws back his head and gives a rasping laugh. It sounds brutal and defeated. S Anon is not a man, but a city. Why, why do you cry for a city? We cry its name because S Anon must not be forgotten. All of the criers of S Anon carry this burden. You mourn a city. Why do you do such a thing? Because its name is all that remains. Its avenues of light, its great spiraling parks. When it was laid to when it was laid waste and reduced to memory, only three score of its people survived. It was our duty to see its name was remembered across the plains. Many criers of Essanon have died for the sake of remembering. Many. If it places you and the others at risk, why don't you stop? The tears I shed. The dust that cloaks me. These things are nothing compared to what awaits should I give up my sacred burden. You must see that it was... that its name is remembered. We are living memorials to its passage. If that's so, then what happens if you all die? A fresh tear springs to the crier's eye. Even his dust-caked face cannot disguise his look of despair. I do not know. We criers of Essendon could not mourn it forever. Even now the dust clings to our robes, the spit dries in our mouths, and our bodies wither and die. Is there any way I can help you? You are kind to ask. The crier shakes his head. Unless you can immortalize S. Anon, there is no help to be had. Does, must it be immortalized by a man? Would a tombstone serve? The crier blinks. Tomb? Stone? It's a stone that records a man's life, his name, a eulogy. If it serves a man, could it not also serve a city that has died? Stones may do such things? Yes, and their lifetime is much longer than a man's. 
If its name was carved on stone, would Essendon's memory be served? The man pauses. Would, would others see this name? This is surreal. Yes, it would be there for all to see, long after you have died. The man nods. If, if such a thing were possible, he looks to you. Where would one find such a stone? I could go look for one. If I find one, I could see to it that Essanon's name is carved upon it. You... You... Would do this? I... The man's eyes water up again. You would be settling, setting all the cries of Essanon free. But a score of us remain. The burden of remembering would be over after so many years. I would do so. I will return when the name is carved. Updated my journey. Ha! I'm under attack. Hee hee hee. Okay, y'all. One at a time, maybe? Destroy this man. Oh, big crits all around. All right, I win. Uh, I can't save. Man, so many people want to murder me in this game. This man has never heard of a tombstone. That's just a whole thing to process. A whole series of people that have been just infinitely mourning and making it their life thing to do. Which is like, fine, you could make it your... Like, it's not wrong to hold the legacy of something, but to make that your entire purpose is another form of being dead while being alive. Like, it's similar to what the dust men do to themselves. Where you devote, you devote yourself to something so much that you're... It's hard to even call it so much a sense of purpose, as opposed to just being like... Skipping out on the life that you get. Creedon. This foul-looking man is quick to notice he has caught your attention. In moments, he's upon you, hawking his wares. He carries a long wooden pole. Dozens of skinned and cooked rats dangle from it. As he speaks, he gestures to them with a broad, filth-encrusted hand, smiling a yellowed, snaggle-toothed grin all the while. Oh, I gotta? How you doing there? What sort of delicious ratsies is you interested in this fine day? Examine the rat seas. Each rat has been skinned and gutted, their feet and tails removed. They dangle from the pole by hooks punched through their necks. As you examine the various manners in which they've been prepared, you realize their heads are slightly misshapen. A bulbous knot of bone protrudes from each cranium, covered in whorls that give it the appearance of brain tissue. Those are strange looking rats. Ah, you've got a keen eye there, Cutter. All I sell is brain vermin, I do. I'm sure you'll find that they've got a much richer flavor than your usual rat. Quite nice, really. He proffers them to you once more, waving the pole before your face enticingly. The rats sway to and fro, hooked like tiny sides of beef. Ugh. Disturbing. Brain vermin? I cut a brain vermin. Foul creatures they are. Now your normal rats, they just eat stored goods and, and multiply. Spread disease and all that. A nuisance, really, no more. Your cranium rat, though, brain vermin, what I go after, they're just trouble. When you got more than a handful of the little pikers together, they start to get smart on you. Sometimes real smart. They become more intelligent. Sure as I'm standing here before you, they do. If I ran across them any more than two score of them, I'd flee from I'd flee from a case like that. He snaps to emphasize the point. I would. 
You get that many of them in a pack, why... Why, they get as smart as a man they do. Go on. That seems like it's immoral to kill them, then. Here is my best advice for you, Cutter. If you're bent on catching brain vermin, stick to small packs, a dozen or so, at most. But I'll tell you... He steps close, his breath fetid in your face, and speaks in a hushed tone. You run into more than that, more than a couple dozen. You run like you're in the shadow of the lady. He backs away from you then, again. Why? What is there to fear? Sorcery, Cutter! Sorcery! You get enough of those little fiends in a space, they gain all sorts of odd powers. Make a basher's brain pour out of his ears, they will. Downright frightening. It's just wrong, I tell you. That's why Sigil's so eager to be rid of him. The bounty and all. Bounty? Someone, pay someone pays for rats' tails? That's right, Cutter. There's a burke in the office of vermin and disease control. Name a lord who pays a bounty on him. A copper head, or tail it is, eh? But they gotta be brain vermin when they do, not just ordinary rats. Tell me more about this lord fellow. His name's Phineas. Phineas Lord. Think he was some sort of eye up, he was. Put down by his rivals and stuck here in the arse end of Sigil. The Burke sits in there alone all night and day, it seems. Waiting for folk to bring in tails and paying them the bounty. You know, it's the best part. Poor Sod must be allergic to rats, cause he's always got a huge rash going. Oh, powers be praised! I ain't that fella. Put down. Any idea why that would happen? Well, he's right chatty. He is. You know, rattle a bone box for hours just on just how smart he is and all and the like. Mayap, he's got, that's got something to do with it. He shrugs. I understand. Who are you? What, me? Why, I'm Creedon. Sometimes called Creed, the Butcher of Rats. He smiles grandiosely, exposing the ill-matched rows of yellowed, broken, and crooked teeth. You seem friendlier than most around here. Well, Cutter, I try. Result, a result of my business, I thinks. Most folks around here are a period downright on friendly lot. But I wants every Cutter to know that Creedon's always got a warm smile and a pipe of not fresh cooked to ratsy for him. He winks at you. <laughs> what is that building there behind you? He tosses a glance over his shoulder. That's the Office of Vermin and Disease Control, Cutter. I sell my rats there for jink, then cook the little bladders up and sell them. That's a, that's a good gig. He gets to sell everything Everything he kills, he sells twice. And we've already been through that. I feel like it's usually best to go, to go as long as you can without telling somebody why you're there, if you are there on purpose. Because there's like a bunch of other stuff you can get through first. And sometimes people, sometimes it changes the context of everything, like maybe they don't want to talk to you anymore. Uh, can you tell me about Sigil? Aye, Sigil, the cage. What were you looking to know, Cutter? Why do you call it the cage? He shakes his head and laughs, causing the dead vermin on his rat pole to wiggle around. You see, Cutter, it's on account of all the doors. Some folk call Sigil the City of Doors. Magical doors they are, and everywhere too. They lead to anywhere, and I mean anywhere. But here's the trick of it all. They're locked. That's so more like a cage than anything else. You can only come and go if you have the right key. Tell me about these doors and keys. He's talking about portals, right? The rat catcher appears quizzically at Mort, who floats behind you. A cutter'd think you'd just ask your Mimir for, da for a dark like that, you would. So they call mis they call se they call secrets dark. Because you light the this somebody else said you light the dark. There's a lot of little quirks here. Mort seems taken aback by aback as all eyes fall on him. What? What? 
You get the impression that, had he had lips, he'd be whistling innocently. Do you have an explanation, Mort? Well, I say we hear this man out, yeah? Mort turns and stares hard at the rat catcher. No, let's hear what you have to say, Mort. Aw, oh, come on, Chief. Uh, why would I hold out on you? I've told you everything useful I know. Let's just... Let's just let this Burke take on the whole thing. This is raising the question of why we have a, a supposed encyclopedia who is self-identified as being one, and he never gives us any information in a... Like, I'm constantly going around town asking everybody else stuff, and he's not having almost any input most of the time. Very well. The rat catcher, staring at you both in confusion and scratching his head, suddenly realizes he's the focus of attention once more. He shakes off the puzzled expression and recomposes himself. Let him speak. Hey, oh, you want so you want all sorts of chance, you do. Well, I'll tell you, I'll give you the sort of the short of it all. The cage is full of doors. These doors are everywhere, all throughout the city of Sigil, but you can't see them not unless you have the right key. Each door has its own key, and each key is different. One key might be a real key, a real key, brass and all, right? But another could be, uh, say, a crooked rat, or a little jig that you does in front of the door. Once you have the right key, you step on through and go do and go to whatever the door takes you. How would you know where the door leads? He frowns, mulling the answer over in his head. Chances are, if you knew the key, you'd know where the door leads already. If you opened one accidentally, say, you'd just have to be careful, you would. You could try sticking your head in and having a peek, but some doors just suck you right in. You could end up in all manner of foul places, Cutter, mark my words. How do you know what key opens what door? He shrugs, bobbing the route rat pole and setting the crooked vermin jangling about once more. You just have to ask the right people. People who know about the dark about that sort of thing, I suppose. Uh, see, some doors stay open and some move. I'd drive a... I'd, dr I'd drive a bloody... Uh, I'd drive... I'd... Blah, 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 blah. It'd drive a blood bar me trying to keep... I don't know what that means. What the fuck are you saying? Keep track of them all. I don't use the doors much myself, but I won't be, uh, be much help to you. Or, so I won't be much help to you. That's, uh, the, the dialect and phonetic spelling all combined to make that whole paragraph just hard to get through. Can you tell me about the Lady of Pain? I, the Mistress of Sigil. I don't talk about the lady, Cutter, and you shouldn't go asking about her neither. And bring ill luck on you, it will. He makes a semicircular sign over his chest. Let's not ask about Farrod. I could, I don't know. I would like one of the rats you have there. Good, Cutter, good. What sort of, what sort of... What sort of woods do you like? He points to each in turn with a grimy fingernail. I got them baked, spiced, boiled, and charred. All fresh, all scrumptious, and only three coppers for two. Uh, definitely spiced. You're gonna have to overcome some shit there, right? You hand over your coppers, and in one switch motion, he runs a pair of spiced rats through a uh, wooden skewer, unhooks them, and places them in your hand. He winks at you. Enjoy, Cutter! Eat a rat see. The rat meat is aromatic and quite spicy, apparently marinated in some sort of herbal mixture before being cooked. It is a bit greasy and rather rich, tasting of some other meat you've sure you've had before. Matt looks at you expectantly. Did you like? Would you like another? Alright, I'll have another. Good! Cutter, good! What sorts would you like? He points to each in turn. Blah, blah, blah. Try charred. Why would you never have boiled? Almost nothing is good boiled. Uh, charred. 
eat a rat see. The rat is burnt and crispy outside, but tender and juicy within. And then everything else is the same. It was good, but I have a question for you. You know, we're friends, I'm eating your rats, and they're like, they're good rats. You're good at cooking rats. So he makes five... He makes five copper per f two rats. Because you get one per t you get one copper per tail, and then he sells them two for three. So every two rats gives him five copper, which could stack up really quick. If he gets a dozen, that's like 30 or something? I don't know. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna focus on the math too much. I was told to ask a man named Creedon in front of the Office of Vermin and Disease Control about the trash-filled archway in Ragpicker's Square. Can you help me? Updated my journal. He thinks for a moment. Aye. I, I know what you're speaking of. There was a lass named Annals who I saw walk through there once while I was looking for rats. Did, don't know how she did it, though. You can probably find her northeast of here, rooting around a pile of lumber for nails and the like. That's all I wish to know. Farewell. It said northeast Nalls. I see you're leaving, Cutter. But before you go, would you like a nice delicious ratsy? I already had them. No thanks. Farewell. He's pushy. I already had multiple. That was Anna. So it's not. That's not who Nalls is. It's a different character. I was like, if this is the main, if this is the, I don't even know if it's mandatory or not. But if this is like the mandatory way forward to get our journal and continue the story, then like, it wouldn't be surprising if you like were kind of pushed to meet up with the main character along the way. I'm under attack. Haha, <laughs> I'm in danger. You see that? I'm hurt. Yeah, please keep attacking my skull. He's better at, at taking damage than I am. People sure do like to attack me all the time. They tend to survive just because it's so irritating to actually track them down once they start running, but the ones that get crit aren't so lucky. Phineas T. Lort, the 39th. That's too many people with the same name. Why are you doing this to each other? At some point, it's like a game of chicken. You see a squat man with rash-covered skin and several pustules covering his face. His clothes seem to mark him as some sort of official, but they are dirty, wrinkled, and covered in rat hair. As you watch, he idly scratches himself with his stubby fingers. Greetings. Aye. The little man shrieks. Oh, he's shrieking. Okay. And jumps, startled. Aye. <laughs> Touching his heart, he takes it. How did you miss me? You're standing at a desk, and I walked in the front door. Touching his heart, he takes a deep breath and pushes his spectacles up on his rash ridden nose. Yes? Yes? What is it that I can do for you? He scratches his nose and looks you up and down, studying your scars. I, uh. I have little to nothing in the till, so if you have come to plunder the premises, this lo locale is ill chosen. I'm not here to plunder the premises. Who are you? I? I am the respected Phineas T. Lort the 39th, in charge of the Hive branch of the Office for Vermin and Disease Control. It is my distinguished privilege, he scratches his chest and, pu and puffs up, to inform you that we, in the bureaucratic sense of the word we, meaning to encompass the sigil bureaucracy as a whole, are accepting bounties on a manner of vermin and strays that infected the... infest the... He scratches again. Uh, fair straight streets of sigil. Hub of the multiverse and the city which sits in the center of all things. The city by which all other cities are measured. 
Hub of the Multiverse. Bounties. Updated my journal. Yes, yes, we, in the bureaucratic sense of the word we, meaning to encompass the... <laughs> meaning to encompass... He says it every time. To encompass the sigil bureaucracy as a whole, are accepting tangible proof of the eradication of brain vermin, aka cranium rats, from the hive area, where they have clustered quite thickly for the past many years, as a recent census of the vermin population has shown. I am empowered by the sigillian bureaucracy to pay a bounty of... He puffs up dramatically. One copper common per cranium rat delivered to my branch office. Cranium rat? Cranium rats are a species of vermin that become more intelligent the more of them are in close proximity to each other. One cranium rat alone is but a nuisance that chews on boards and burrows into food, but five, ten, or more, and their intelligence grows until it surpasses even the intelligence of ones such as myself. Scratches, then sniffs disdainly. I imagine that two or three cranium rats might be enough to outwit you, sir. Two or three? Wow. You just insulted me. How many How many cranium rats are in sigil? More than enough to last a bounty hunter or a lifetime. Uh, perhaps several. Hmm? Your questions would be? How did someone as illustrious as you end up in such a place? Well, it is quite an epic tale, you see. I was born here in Sigil, uh... What? You have rested for eight hours. <laughs> well, I guess I'm probably healthier now, so that's good. And then I realized that I had somehow offended my colleagues, for I found myself promoted to this branch office, and I have remained here for these past many years. He sighs, then idly scratches his nose. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, I had some other questions. That rash of yours contagious. My rash? Contagious? No, no, well, I... At least I don't think so. It's a symptom of the position, I'm afraid. The job literally grows on you. He scratches himself again. Ugh. No more questions. Farewell. Hey, my health is full. You know what? It's surreal to be jump scared by a cutscene like that, that I, to the point where I was like, did I just All fucking... Right. I was like, did I die? <laughs> I was concerned what happened. But, uh... I'll take a, I'll take a, I'll take a free rest. One of my to-do list things was to try to go back to the witch and get healed. But instead, this has resolved itself. Are these new enemies? Oh, if it's been eight hours, it's now a different time of day. I'm gone. Did he just disappear? So now it's a different time of day, and anybody that I fought so far probably uh, healed. I would like to play a little more zoomed in on average. Especially during conversations, just to look at just to look at the conversation better. I want I just kinda reflexively am like, okay, wh where am I going in this town? And then I start I accidentally activate something before I can like make the game more nice to look at for combat or conversations. See, I'm already here, so I figure I should probably try to poke around this area and not get lost. I guess we're looking for Nall now, so I, I, I'm probably still looking for somebody in this map. They said northeast? It's probably up here. Miriam. Muriel! Ash Mantle. You see a dustman in long black robes and a pale face. Unlike the dustman you saw in the mortuary, however, this man looks conf <clears throat> confused and is glancing about, as if looking for something. When he spots you, he raises his hand to attract your attention. Greetings. The man seems relieved that you are speaking to him. He bows slightly. 
Thank you for hearing me, Traveler. I am known as Ashmantle, one of the Dustmen sect. I was wondering if you could direct me. I don't know the area very well, and I'm looking for a certain establishment, a bar, that those of my sect frequent. Do you know of such a place? Sect? You're a dustman, don't you mean faction? The dustman nods. Well, yes, faction. I meant faction. Sect, faction, they are much the same thing, really. Do you happen to know of this bar that my faction frequents? Huh. It sounds like he's trying to infiltrate the Ashmen. The Dustmen. Just like the other person that did that too. I've heard of it, and be willing to help you if you answer some questions for me. He nods. Your request is reasonable. Tell me where I might find the Gathering Dust Bar, and I will be happy to answer any of your questions. The bar you want is by the mortuary. Orient yourself by the mortuary front gate, then walk directly southwest. Can't miss it. The Dust Man smiles. Thank you very much, Traveler. I appreciate your kindness. The people of the Hive are... Rarely helpful in such matters. You were like five foot away from the person that is happy to answer all your questions. Tell me about it. Say, can I ask you some questions? Can you tell, uh, can you tell me a little about the Dustmen? He pauses for a moment, then nods. Uh, it, it would be my pleasure. We, the Dustmen, Recognize this life for what it is, an opportunity to experience our passions before the next life. We sift through the dust of our past lives for meaning before the next. <laughs> so we're, we're hanging him now, we've, we've given them enough rope to completely fuck up. That's no dust man can't I've ever heard, who are you? The man nods, a little uncomfortably white. I am Ashmantle, one of the Ninth Circle. Ninth Circle? There is no such thing. He suddenly tenses up. I don't have time to debate the practices and rankings of the Dustman sect with you. So if you'll excuse me, grab his hand. Your hand snaps out and wraps around his wrist in a crushing grip. You see his Dustman facade crumple. And he snarls as he tries to tear away from your grip. Unhand me, dog, or I'll call the guards. After you answer some questions, dust man. Pa! He looks more irritated than anything else. What gave me away? Everything? Your ignorance on some of the common dustbed philosophies. You should do some research before trying to run a con on someone smarter than you. I have some questions for you. What's your questions then? Why are you- what are you doing in that dustman getup? He shrugs. Nobody suspects a dustman. He gives a hollow chuckle. Can make a nice bit of jink before anyone catches on to the peel. Yeah, pretty smart. Look, I don't want to ever see you pulling this little con anywhere in Sigil again, understand? He nods. Agreed. We'll never cross paths again. 
I'll find another peel, a uh, job elsewhere. Very well. Now go. He's just booking it. He's just booking it. He's out of here. He's out of here. He's getting way out of here. Everyone you talk to is trying to steal your money. Or it's a lot of them are. This, these things are just around everywhere. That very specific one tried to go out. What the? That's a lot. Gither. Gither Zarai townsperson? It's a Gither Zarai. This man slowly turns as you approach. His eyes are like two black stones. They briefly flicker over your frame, then lock, lock gazes with you. Although the man looks humanoid, he has a yellow cast to his skin and gaunt features. He has a thin, angular frame. His limbs look like they're made of nothing but strings of muscle knotted around bone. His clothing is a curious blend of sharp colors and dull, mud-stained browns. Greetings. The man remains silent. He does not acknowledge your greeting, merely stares at you. I said greetings. Give it up, chief. Talking to a gith is like trying to make good with good with razor vine. Let's go. Gith? Yeah, gith. More glances at the gith who is still staring at you. We'll talk about it some other time. I, I'm going to ask him some questions first. Can you understand me? He pauses for a moment, studying you, then replies in broken common. You are not known to me. His accent makes it difficult to understand him. It's like he takes every word, snaps it, then drags out every vowel for good measure. The emphasis he places on the word known strikes you as odd. What do you want? I had some questions for you. I will not hear you. He looks like he is about to walk past you. Let him leave. I'm not gonna like... Capture him or anything. Just an odd moment for us. Oh well. <laughs> 